So the U.S. is back, but this isn't just a problem that gets addressed at the national level. It can be addressed at the state level as well. In fact, when Governor Schwarzenegger was leading California, he passed a lot of cutting edge environmental legislation, particularly that impacted the automobile industry. It didn't make him terribly popular at the time with them, but now it's common sense. We see the automotive industry embracing this, and many of them are leading the charge trying to find fossil fuel free technologies. And one of those companies that's doing it is one of the biggest automotive brands on the planet, Ford Motor Company. But we're having a little trouble right now reaching him uh, because this is what happens when we do this live in the midst of a pandemic. Sometimes the technology doesn't always cooperate. Uh, so we're waiting right now for the CEO of Ford and we'll wonder, and he is here. Well, that was a dramatic tease right there. So right now, the governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, is going to have a discussion with the CEO of Ford, who's helping lead the charge in clean technologies, Jim Farley and Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hey, Jim, how are you? I'm great, Governor. Good to see you. Happy to be part of the conference. Well, thank you very much for being part of it. And, you know, I'm a big fan of what you're doing. And I just wanted to ask you the first question right now. As you remember, when I was governor, I, we had an all-out war with the car manufacturers from all over the world because they hated our new tailpipe emission standards. And they sued California and they sued me and it was, it was like a battle. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because you and Ford have decided to join California. Ford has decided to join California and to march together with California in the right direction. So what happened there and uh, why did you make that decision? Well, you know, Ford's a different kind of company. Uh, we're a family company. Bill Ford has been an advocate for, uh, for moving to green technology for a long time. And the management team for a long time didn't listen. I think we, we picked purpose over politics. Uh, it, you know, we're the only full line manufacturer committed to Paris. And when we did that, you know, we, we really had to commit to California. Um, we think this is, you know, history will be on the right side of history over time because of this choice. Uh, it's not easy, uh, but I think it's, it's really the right thing to do. And as I said, Ford is a purpose built, uh, you know, company. It's, it's, it's not just a, a profit machine. We really understand our place in history after 118 years. Well, I have the utmost respect for you and for Ford for doing that because it's the right thing to do. And we all know there are other car manufacturers and we don't want to mention their names, but there are others that are going in the other direction and that are fighting California. So I want to say thank you for coming along with California and working with us. Uh, the other question that I have is, um, you know, I'm a big fan of the F-150 and I've talked about it just earlier in my speech. And so, um, my question is just, you have now a plan not only to develop this 150, F-150, but also to only sell electric cars in Europe from 2030 on. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think both of us are big car guys. And, um, you know, from my perspective, uh, this is just a better vehicle. Uh, after 30 years of being in the industry, you know, the, the electric vehicle is so, so much more than just propulsion. Uh, the F-150 is a good example. It's America's most favorite vehicle. We sell over a million a year. And uh, we, you can power your house for three days. We have a mega power frunk uh, with 200 pounds of storage in, in front. Um, you know, the, the truck can do so much more like the supplemental power uh, which we saw because of climate change, all the issues in Texas this year, you know, many people were powering their houses with their F-150 hybrids. They'll be able to do that with the electric F-150. I, I, I think what we, we need to really reinforce is that these electric vehicles are, are not just innovating the propulsion, 
They're bringing a lot of new technologies, digital vehicles to the marketplace that can do so much more than just move with zero emissions. Uh, the, the Pro Power on board is a good example, and a pickup truck is, is perfect. We can now power job sites across America uh, and, and Europe uh, without having diesel generators. Um, and, and so this ability to have a purely digital product uh, and especially applying this to America's best-selling vehicle is exactly how we want to get there uh, to commit to the California standard. Now, uh, I am very excited about that, about the future of the way you see the future. And my question is, um, what is your thinking about proving the naysayers wrong? Because the reason I'm mentioning this is because, you know, one of my principles of success is always don't listen to the naysayers. But on top of it, I've seen it firsthand in California, when we uh, kind of passed off the strict environmental laws in California, they said this was the worst idea and it would never work and the economy would go down and businesses will leave the state of California and they will be crashing and jobs would be lost and all this. In the meantime, today, we are the most successful economy in the United States by far, and we have the strictest environmental laws, so we could prove that you can do both at the same time, that you can protect the environment and protect the economy at the same time. And I'm sure that they told you also that if you go electric and if you spend this money that you did, I mean, $30 billion on research on green vehicles, which is outstanding. I'm sure they told you this is the worst thing that you can do. But in fact, that you've proven the opposite because when you became the CEO, the stocks were at $6.50 or $6.75 or whatever it was. And now since then, they have doubled, more than doubled at $15. So this is a huge success. So what do you say to those naysayers that didn't really believe in you or didn't believe in anything that has to do with the environment? Well, so far they're wrong. <laughs> you know, I, I would say uh, we aren't the biggest car company in America, but we have more U.S. jobs and we build more vehicles in the U.S. than any other brand. We bet on America, even though it's more expensive. And, and, and the burden falls on us at Ford to figure out this transition, not just for uh, the better climate, but also to transition our workers, as you said, because we have more workers. Uh, we're we've already invested $3.2 billion in our manufacturing facilities. My grandfather started in the Rouge plant. Um, he started as an hourly worker at Ford in 1913, and that plant is a fully green plant that's going to make the F-150 on our oldest site. Uh, it's almost 100 years old. We're spending a billion dollars now transforming the Ford Cologne Center in Germany to being all electric. We're insourcing the motors and the e-axles, uh, taking transmission and engine jobs and moving them over, vertically integrating, so our team has jobs as we move to electrification. An electric vehicle is, is about 40% lower in labor content, so if we don't vertically integrate, you know, there's going to be a lot of Americans are going to lose their job. But that, you know, how we looked at uh, Governor, is that that's our responsibility. So we decided to, to vertically integrate, to start making more of the components ourselves uh, to sh secure those jobs. We just announced a battery plant uh, we're building in Georgia. Now we're gonna have multiple battery plants across uh, you know, North America and, and eventually in Europe. Those are new jobs. And that vertical integration is really important. The naysayers can say what they want, but you know, forward we're planning on that future and kind of managing it uh, the risk ourselves. We do need help from the government. As you heard from the EPA administrator, we're finding really great partnership with the current administration in, in North America and certainly happening across Europe too. We need market-based consumer and manufacturing incentives to make these very difficult transitions. The reality is we don't want to leave any workers behind as we move to zero emissions. Well, I'm very excited about that, and I just want to remind you before I get off here, we in Austria have some room, if you want to build a plant, an auto plant here in Austria, 
That would be fantastic. We will help you. I have the Bundes president right here. We have the chancellor here. We can make a deal right now. Okay, just remember that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I hope you'll be back. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, go Governor, one thing I have to say is, um, you know, it's been great to spend the time today with you. Um, but I, I also uh, wanted to say that, um, you know, we're really excited to get you behind one of these F-150 Lightnings. I think we have a fun image there uh, that we wanted to show you uh, of you in the F-150 Lightning um, because uh, we're really excited for you to drive this vehicle. Uh, there you go. Uh, perfect. So uh, maybe, maybe someday we'll make it in Austria. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're on. We're going to go and test drive the vehicle. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was pretty nice, Governor. Isn't that fantastic? You're getting an F-150 out I of mean, this, no, huh? But, I mean, forget all that. You know, I don't look for freebie. I can afford a car. But uh, I can tell you one thing. This is a perfect example. Jim is a perfect example of this partnership that I'm always talking about. Yeah. From the private to the public sector, that partnership when that works, we're going to go and solve the problems. And I think he's a great leader, and that's why I wanted to have him on. So thank you very much, Jim, for being with us here today. And I hope that you come next year in person, okay? Thank you. Well, that was great. And <laughs> great to see it, as you were saying, to see it can be successful, too, that the stock value is going up. So now we've got another guest for you, but this one is here in person. 